I don't know why, but I feel like talking in a Russian accent. It's no offense to Russians, it's just quite interesting accent for me to do. And maybe one day I can get job as voiceover actor for a Russian woman. Hey everybody, it's Premier Gal here, and today I'm going to be teaching you the best export settings for Facebook. Now, Facebook today is a platform of discovery and entertainment as well, right? You're on your phone, you're scrolling through, and videos are auto-playing, most of the time with the audio off, if, if you're not aware of that. Um, you usually see the captions and you follow along. Also, you'll notice that square videos are quite popular on Facebook, in addition to the standard 16 by 9 video. And the great thing about Facebook is the player adapts to the size of the square format. It doesn't have the pillar boxes like on YouTube and Vimeo when you would upload a square video. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own 1080 by 1080 square preset to use when you want to create a square video for Facebook. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay guys, so we are inside of Premiere Pro here and I have this video that I exported yesterday as you watched. It was on the Vimeo export settings, right? And so what I want to do is create a derivative, a rendition of this video for Facebook because I don't want to upload the full video to Facebook, right? I just want to make a short teaser. You don't want to make it more than 30 seconds, right? And like the maximum length of video that you can upload to Facebook is 120 minutes. I don't know who you are if you are uploading 120 minutes, but nobody's gonna watch the full 120 minutes. People can barely get through three seconds sometimes on Facebook. And the largest file size for Facebook is four gigabytes. So that's the maximum I think will be okay. I just wanna do a short 10 to 15 to 20 second teaser. I'm not quite sure how long it will be, but it's definitely not gonna be longer than 30 seconds. And I'm gonna show you how to do this um, by creating a square version of this video. The first thing that I have to do is create a new sequence that's in a square format, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to go down to new item here in the project panel, and you're going to select new sequence. And then it's gonna open up a new dialog box called new sequence. And here is where you're going to select a preset, which you can make a custom preset from. So let me show you what I mean. So for the 1080 uh, by 1080 Facebook video, we're going to select a 1080p preset from digital SLR. And I'm going to choose the preset DSLR 1080p 30 frames per second because 30 frames per second is what I shot in. Now before I press OK, you're going to go up to settings and all you're going to do is change the frame size horizontal to 1080, okay? So now this makes a square video. You can see the aspect ratio is one to one here, okay? And Facebook also prefers um, 40, 44, 100 hertz. So we can go ahead and change that here. And then what you're going to do is hit save preset. And you're gonna call it Facebook 1080 by 1080 so you can use it for the future. So go ahead and save that. And it's, it's just gonna take a second to load up here. And now the preset that you just saved is here as Facebook 1080 by 1080 in this custom folder. Now you're gonna hit okay. So now go ahead and rename the sequence just to keep track of it. Facebook 1080 by 1080. And now you can see I have two sequences here, the original, the 16 by nine video that I wanna make into this square format, this one-to-one. -one. So what I'm gonna do is create a pancake timeline. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag it down by clicking and dragging the sequence. And now I have the Vimeo sequence literally on top of the Facebook sequence. So it'll make it easy for me to drag and drop and it will automatically copy the clips for me. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger here like so, and I'm just gonna drag this first portion here down into the Facebook sequence. Now this dialog box, it'll say, uh-oh, the video footage that you were just taking from the other sequence is in a different format. Do you wanna change it to match their format? Well, you wanna say, no, I wanna keep the existing settings because you want it to be in the square format. And I will show you right now 
what will happen. So you can see now here that it's cropping the image, right? So you can keep it like this, right? You can keep the image and like, you can change the position in the, in the effects controls, which is what I'm going to show you. So you can either leave it like this if you're happy with this crop, but I want to actually, but I want to actually scale this down and I want to have text on the top and the bottom. You've probably seen this on Facebook where people have, you know, some sort of text on the top and like a website or a hashtag on the bottom. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is scale it down so it fits perfectly in the square um, horizontally. So there'll be a black bar on top and bottom. So you're going to select this first clip here and go up to effects controls. And if you scale it down to 60, the 1080p will fit exactly inside the square, see? So it almost looks perfect. I'm gonna get rid of this um, Vimeo sequence here just so we have more space since I won't need it anymore, okay? So now I have more space to work in. Let me just make this sequence bigger. So now that that looks great, what I'm gonna do is just copy this and paste the attributes, pasting the scale. You can do this by hitting Command C on this clip and I'm just gonna shift and select these two other clips here. I think I have three clips here. Okay, just these two. And then I'm gonna highlight both of them and then right click and go to paste attributes and I'm going to paste the motion, okay? So now even this is inside of the frame, right? You can see here as well. So that looks great. So now that we have the video in this format, um, you can add a text layer if you want to. If you go over to the project panel, you can go ahead and create a new title tool. I'm just gonna call this Facebook text. And here um, it'll open up and if you hit this I button, it'll show the background, which is great. And you can add text like um, new video tutorial and you can change the font. Let's make it feature a T. Now, don't hit Command C inside of the title tool because it is a bug and it will cause Premiere Pro to shut down. So I found a workaround and actually if you hit Option, click and drag down, you can duplicate it without having to press Command C, which Oh, lifesaver. Otherwise, I don't know what I would do. And then down here, you can put a website or a hashtag or something else. I'm just going to put my website here, premiergal.com, and you can center it horizontally so it fits. Okay. So this is like a very popular way of, of doing Facebook videos, right? So I'm just going to add this text here, and I'm just going to expand this out just by pulling the end of it here. And so now you can see that as I play it, it's going to be all across the sequence. It's gonna be on the top and the bottom throughout the entire teaser. And then, you know, at the end, I would probably say, you know, watch the full tutorial on YouTube. I'll put it in another title box and then I'm ready to export. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this and then I'm going to show you the best export settings um, inside of Premiere Pro for Facebook. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up to File, Export, Media, and then you're going to keep the format at H264. If it's not selected already, make sure you go ahead and select that. And then you're gonna go ahead and um, choose a preset um, you're not going to choose the Facebook preset that's here already, right here. It's the 720p HD. We don't want that. We want to create our own, okay? So I'm going to create um, our own Facebook one from scratch. So go ahead and just choose match source medium bitrate, okay? And then you're going to save the file into the correct folder. Just call it Facebook teaser. Hit save, okay? And now you're gonna go down to um, the video tab here and you'll see that it's already matching the source, right? Which is what we want. 
if we had this unchecked, we can go ahead and uncheck this and adjust the width here to be a different size. But we want it to be the same as the sequence. So make sure that that's 1080 by 1080. The frame rate is good. Now let's go down to bitrate settings. So this is where I want to change a little bit, okay? So just like YouTube and Vimeo, the best quality is using the variable bitrate to pass. So select that. And then I'm going to have a target bitrate of six. And you will see that it brought up the estimated file size to 18, which is fine. If you wanted to share this on your mobile phone and save it to your phone, you may want to reduce the target bitrate a bit to let's say like four. So it's a little bit less, but because I'm just saving this to my computer, I'm just gonna keep it at six and I'm gonna have a maximum bitrate of 12. So this is what I found is the best settings for bitrate, okay? And then you can use maximum render quality if you would like. And then if you would like to auto publish to Facebook, you can go to the publish tab here. And if you scroll on down here, you can go ahead and select Facebook. One thing I did notice with the publish tab here is it's only letting me publish to my personal account and it won't let me select a page. But I do have some good news. Um, Adobe is working on something right now. It's in a private beta right now. It's called the social publishing panel and it will allow you to publish directly to a page with a custom thumbnail and all of that. And so hopefully soon it will be released to the public, but I'm really excited to share more information about that, but I can't right now. So if you wanted to auto publish it, you could do it that way, but because I don't want to publish to my personal, I'm just going to uncheck that. And then I would just hit export and that's it. I hope that you guys found it useful. And if you did, please do share it with somebody else and give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and go to premiergal.com slash tutorials and make a new request because I want to know what you want to learn. Okay? So I will see you guys next time. Bye. DSLR 1080p, 30 frames per second. Then hit settings tab. Then change 1920 to 1080.